Our help is in the name of the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Welcome to this time of worship on this first Lord's Day of 2021. We will continue to live stream this 11 o'clock uh, service of worship indefinitely, and we will continue to uh, not have uh, in-person worship for at least the next two Sundays and watch for more information on that as to when we will have limited uh, in-person worship. I'd like to uh, introduce someone who you just heard, uh, Sam Libra. Sam is our new organist here at Second Presbyterian Church, and we welcome him, uh, give thanks for his presence among us, and uh, I know he looks forward to getting to know you when he can actually be in your presence. So, uh, Sam, welcome. From the prophet Isaiah, arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. We worship God. The table of sustenance, children of God, welcome home. God's grace is lavished upon us, poured out like water through the life, death, and the resurrection of our Lord. Trusting in the love and goodness of God, let us confess our sins together. Let us pray. Holy God, you have given us everything. We fail to respond with gratitude. In Jesus Christ, you have given us your word. We answer with empty promises and lies. In Jesus Christ, you have given us your light. We try to hide ourselves from your glory. In Christ, you have given us your life. Even this precious gift we have not always received. Have mercy on us, O God. Forgive us. In Jesus Christ, give us the faith and power to become what you created us to be, beloved children, full of grace and truth. Friends, in baptism, we are signed and sealed through Jesus Christ. We have been called by God, claimed in Christ, and set free through the Spirit. Believe this good news, that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven 
Thanks be to God. Shine upon us, God of glory, and by your Spirit reveal to us the grace and truth of Jesus Christ, your Word made flesh. Amen. Here now a reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They are all gathered together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses, Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Most of us work hard to try to make Christmas special, to bring to uh, reality the, the lyrics of that famous song, to make Christmas the most wonderful time of the year. We hang lights on our homes, we arrange lights on the shrubbery and on the trees, and we put up uh, crashes and we put up manger scenes outside and we put Santa and the reindeer on the lawn and all of those things to make it festive. We put up a Christmas tree, whether it's real or artificial, and we load it up with ornaments and lights. We have wreaths on the doors of our homes and of our church. We make extraordinary sacrifices of energy and time and money in order to be home for Christmas. Usually around Christmas, we gather with family that we hardly ever see any other time of the year, or at least we call them. We pull special clothes out of the back of the closet we cook special foods and we cook enough of it to feed an army, which is exactly what it may feel like when all those people come around our table for dinner. A table set with the good china. We squeeze into a sanctuary. With the candles blazing, we sing those favorites that we always and only sing at Christmas. There's nothing ordinary about the Christmas celebration except in 2020. Instead of wearing our Christmas best into a shimmering sanctuary, we were in long johns. We were wearing hiking boots. We were wearing those wool uh, beanies outside. Uh, we were under blankets on folding lawn chairs in 20 something degree cold and wind in the chapel oval as we welcome the Christ child on Christmas Eve. 
And even so, about 150 or 60 of you showed up. And instead of, of friends and family gathered around the table on Christmas Day, Diana and I were with David and Morgan in our garage. In our garage with one of the doors open just enough to provide for adequate ventilation so that as the propane heater was roaring, we stayed safe. It was a frigid day. We sat at card tables spaced far enough apart for us to be safe. It was about as ordinary, about as pedestrian, strangely ordinary as it gets. And the word became flesh and lived among us. Or the word became flesh and made his home among us. And better yet, as the message paraphrase lays it out, the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. I like that rendering because the Greek phrase uh, lived or made his home among us literally means pitched a tent. The word pitched a tent among us or went camping among us. The word camped out in our very ordinary and routine lives. The word camped out in the body of a very ordinary, unimpressive, largely unnoticed infant. The word. God's creative speech, the word, God's wisdom, the word, God's self-revealing, the word is experienced in the everydayness of our ordinary lives. And in the everydayness of this ordinary human being, Jesus. God is made known. Not in a temple or in a palace. God is made known not in the flesh of a king or the commander of armies or in the flesh of a brilliant philosopher. But the word takes up residence in a common peasant who passes through a hard and short life mostly unnoticed unappreciated and unwanted. Let that greatest of mysteries sink in for a moment. Almighty God, Almighty God, the eternal, the unknowable, the one who is too holy to look upon, the one whose name is too sacred to pronounce, almighty God becomes visible, touchable, accessible in this Jesus. As somebody said a, a long time ago, this Jesus is the human face of God. We had a getaway last weekend to Story, Indiana, which is near Nashville, Indiana, and I suspect many of you know about that place. We stayed in the, the Wheeler House, which is across the street from the Story Inn. The Wheeler House was at one time a, a one-room schoolhouse. It's a B&B, &B, basically, with a lot of buildings, not just one, but it was the day after Christmas, and um, with the requirements of physical distancing, the wonderful, well-regarded restaurant there was shut down for the day and for the week, really. But the tavern was open, and they were serving bar food and all of that, but for the breakfast part of the B&B, &B, 
they brought a boxed breakfast each day. Saturday, as the day wore on, became grayer, colder. We ran into one of the employees as we were coming back from an excursion into Nashville, somebody we had worked with before, uh, who said, well, I'm going to bring you a boxed breakfast uh, later today because there won't be anybody around on Sunday. Great. Sure enough, right before it got dark, this young man showed up, knocked on the door. I opened the door expecting to see him, but there standing before me was this, this precious little girl. Maybe six or seven, she had at least one baby tooth gap in her smile. She was beaming as she held out to me this box breakfast. There was obvious pride in doing the job well, and her, the caretaker, the, the employee, said that she was his niece. And so I said, uh, what's your name? <laughs> her name was Sophia. That's the Greek word in the Bible for wisdom. It is the word for God's wisdom. God's creating speech. Sophia. God's child. <laughs> Sophia in a child. Holding out to us the gift of sustenance. Shining a light into a dreary dusk on an ordinary average day. What has come into being in him, the word, was life. And the life was the light of all people. Jesus, the word made flesh, shows up unexpectedly at our door holding out to us in love the gift of life. Life that is full and rich and meaningful and purposeful and eternal. The word made flesh shows up at our door. Smiling upon us, the light of God's grace and favor. Shining the light of God's grace into our own dreary self-absorption, our own dreary faithless despair. And it's so easy to miss him. We're so often distracted by our busyness that we don't hear that knock at the door. We're often so distracted by the noise of our lives. And in my own life, at least, I know that it's tempting again and again to fall back into wrong-headed thinking that God is some demanding, far away, detached being who exists only in some spiritual realm and can be experienced only when we enter into that same spiritual realm and we enter into it by acting in spiritual ways. But the great life and world changing mystery of the incarnation, the word of God made flesh in Jesus of Nazareth, the incarnation proclaims that we don't have to search for God in the extraordinary or in the spiritual experiences. We don't have to go to holy places to find God. Because in Jesus, God has already found us. God has already come to us and still comes to us in the everydayness 
of ordinary life. The Presbyterian writer Kathleen Norris says about incarnation, it reveals the ordinary circumstances of my life to be full of mystery and full of gospel, which means good news. In this year past that has brought what seems so often wave after wave of darkness, do we dare trust that we're not alone in all of this? That the light of love shines in even the deepest night? That light finally cannot be extinguished? In these days when death often comes suddenly, randomly, relentlessly, when we hear so much about the worst of human nature, do we dare hang on to the promise of a light that cannot be overcome? For the first time during this fall and winter season, I have to admit that the Ohio Valley grayness has done a number on me. I'm longing for sun, longing for light. And yet, I've noticed how quickly after the winter solstice, the daylight is beginning to linger just a little bit longer every day. Do we dare to trust in a God who has pitched a tent in the light-deprived places of our lives? Who loves us so much that God is willing to walk with us through both the ugliness and the beauty of human existence? A God who leads us to the home that we long for more than anything else. The question that we all have to answer eventually is just who is this God that I claim to believe in? Who is this God I worship? Who is this God I try to serve And to understand. If we dare to trust. That Jesus of Nazareth. Is the human face of God. What do we see when we gaze upon his face? I see a face. Full of costly. Passionate love. I see a face of welcome and of hospitality, a face of mercy and forgiveness, a face that longs for me to stop and pay attention. To pay attention to that grace upon grace that washes over all of us in the ordinary moments and places of life. Grace that comes, even on a Christmas, just like the one just passed. And to God be the glory now and always. Let us now affirm our faith together. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things. And in him all things hold together. 
He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. This table of bread and wine is now to be made ready. It is the table of company with Jesus and with all who love him. It is the table of sharing with the lost and the least of this world with whom Jesus identified himself. It is the table of communion with God's earth, the earth in which Christ became incarnate. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. Come to this table, you who have been here often and you who have not celebrated for a long time. Come to this table, you who have been able to follow Jesus, you who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed. Come. For it is Christ who invites us to meet him at this table. Christ does invite us to this table. And so we come to the table bringing all of who we are, which includes our hopes, our dreams, and our very selves. We come bringing the concerns that we carry the concerns of the world. And this day, we are mindful especially of the Nesbitt family, who on just Friday lost Chuck Nesbitt. We remember his wife, Nancy. 
Remember the family of Mary Webb, whose life we celebrated yesterday. Specifically, we remember her son Rob, as he and his wife Anne are struggling. And we remember Charlie Huber, the news of his recent fall and his long recovery from several broken ribs. So as we go to the Lord in prayer, as we come to this table, let us bring ourselves. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them to the to Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to, to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and praise. Holy and right it is and our joyful duty to give thanks to you at all times and all places, O God. For you, O Lord, are our creator, almighty and everlasting God. And we give you thanks for making your love evident since the very beginning of time when you spoke the word which replaced the darkness of chaos with life-giving light. A light which has nurtured our creation for generations of people, revealing over and over again the fragility of the darkness in our world. So you spoke the word which would once and for all dispel the darkness of our chaotic lives. Through your love for the world, the word became flesh, lived among us, full of grace and truth. So the angels caroled glory to you in the highest heavens and peace to all people on earth. We join them with all people to praise your holy name, saying together, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, as the travelers with their treasures were overwhelmed with joy on finding Jesus, so we are also overwhelmed on finding out the depths of his love for us. For Jesus showed just how beloved we are to him by loving us and giving himself for us. Most righteous God, we rem remember in this supper his perfect sacrifice offered once on the cross for the sin of the whole world. In the joy of his resurrection and the expectation of his coming again, we offer ourselves to you as holy and living sacrifices. Together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ has is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. And so now we pray that you would send the power of your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine, O oh God. That we may experience the presence of the word made flesh, Jesus Christ. Breathe your spirit in us that we may be one body with him living out his ministry in the world today and every day. This we pray in the name of Jesus, the one who taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night our Lord Jesus Christ was arrested, he took bread, and after giving thanks to God for it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins in my blood. Every time you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the saving life, death, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus until he comes. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. 
Thanks be to God. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, for once again you have filled us with good things, not just bread and wine, but your very self. Now may this glimpse of your kingdom sustain us and give us eyes to see you at work in every place and strength to be your body in the world. As you have blessed the bread and broken it, you have blessed us and let light shine through the cracks. Make us your people again and again, light for the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Just as we share the grace of God when we are at this table, we share the grace of God with one another through different events happening in the life of this church. Second Cup returns next Sunday the 10th with a little different format. Um, we will be discussing scripture together, so I invite you to come for a little bit of fellowship and um, some discussion on scripture next Sunday, the 10th. Thank you to all those who have donated to the COVID-19 fund. It is because of your generosity that we have been able to share the grace of God with so many of our mission partners. This is an ongoing opportunity for you to um, share the grace of God with one another and the world around us. Because it is a new year and a new month, we do have a uh, new mission of the month this month. It is the Healing Place. Um, they are in most need of personal care products. Um, and if you are willing to, you can drop those products off um, Mondays and or Sundays and Mondays before noon underneath the portico outside. Thank you for all of the ways in which you have um, continued to support this church um, and our mission partners throughout this rough time of COVID-19. Now let us continue in worship as we prepare to share the grace of God with the world around us as we leave this place.
as you have been fed at this table, go now and feed the hungry. As you have been set free, go now and set free those who are imprisoned. As you have received, give. As you have heard, proclaim. And go with the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, this day and forever. Amen.